Okay, here's another caddis dry that uh, is a little different than uh, a lot of the caddis dries you may have seen already. Um, this one's called a bloom caddis, and this is a really cool little parachute caddis pattern, and there's a couple little tricks to tie in it. Um, I'm going to tie it on a uh, Teamco 100 SP BL size 16. Um, you know, any dry fly hook will work. Um, I like that SP though. You, you know why, if you've watched any of the videos. Um, and I'm going to use some, some gold colored Vivas 14 knot. Um, and really I'm using this color thread so it'll show up a little better for you. Uh, brown thread would be just fine. Um, and 14 knot or 8 knot would be, would be appropriate. Um, so I'm going to start the thread a couple eye lengths back from the hook eye and make a thread base back to the bend and then come forward again. And at that point, I'm going to tie in a piece of um, extra small copper wire, and this will be our rib. So I'm going to catch that piece of wire and draw it down to length. And I'm going to wrap all the way back over it to the bend and run forward again. Now the body on this fly is made out of, uh, you know, originally golden pheasant tail. Um, now with the interest of making this something that uh, you can do with what you've got on hand. Um, you know, regular ring neck pheasant tail will work fine, um, as will um, turkey quill. Um, so I'm going to tie this one with turkey quill. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little section. I've got, you know, eight or ten fibers here. And I'll peel those off. And then I'll cut the tips so that they're square. And I'm going to tie them in by their tip ends up here at this front end. And run back over this all the way back to the bend again and then come forward. So I'm going to wrap these turkey tail fibers. And you can see this uh, makes kind of a nice chunky little little body here. And I'll tie that off with a few turns and trim those stubs out. And then it's not a bad idea to counter wrap this with your wire. So I'm going to wrap the wire the opposite direction. I'm coming under the hook to the front. Um, this is not something I typically do, um, but I've been getting more into counter wrapping for no apparent reason at all lately. You can wrap the same direction and be just fine. I'll tie that wire off with a few turns and then that fine stuff you can just break off. Now we're going to put a little wing in here, and the wing of this is the wing on this is going to be made out of yearling elk. Um, I'm going to grab my stacker here. So I'm going to take a, a clump of kind of light-colored yearling elk, and I want a, a decent-sized clump. It doesn't need to be too heavy, but a decent-sized clump. And I'm going to get it all cleaned out, and then I'll stack it up. like so. Now before I go to tie this wing in, I want to make a thread base all the way up to the hook eye and back to the front edge again. And then I'll spin that thread up just a bit just to cord it. Um, it'll bite into the hair a little bit better if I do it that way. So I'm going to take this clump of, of elk hair now and I'm going to measure it about a, a shank length long, hook length long. And I'm going to set it in so it should extend a little bit past the bend. And I'll put two turns around it and tighten the thread toward me. And with that yearling elk you can see that'll really flare out. And I'll just go in short increments, you know, small steps, one turn in front of the other, working forward through those butt ends to kind of anchor that down in several spots. Um, now, I always try to grab all these butt ends at once and come down in and make one clean cut here so that I can kind of smooth those butt ends off into a, a nice little taper without having to fight with it too much. And I'm going to bump that wing back just a bit, like so. So nothing, nothing fancy so far. I see it. Let's get rid of that. Yeah. Well, isn't that better? You feel better about that? I do. All right. So now we're going to get to the parachute part of this. And for the parachute, we're going to use some uh, Cerise McFlylon. Um, you can use baby pink also. That's what's uh, used on the original one, which is a little bit softer pink. Um, to me, that's almost white to my eye, so um, it doesn't really stick out that well for me, so I can't see it as well. So I use this little bit brighter pink, but you know, obviously you can do, do what you want, man. You do you. I'm going to take about a half a strand. And I'm going to lay it in here and tie it down at the center of its length, kind of diagonal across the top of the hook. I'm going to pull the front end toward me. 
and try not to catch that wing. You know what I just realized? I didn't show you the trick. So the trick to keeping this wing out of the way while you're doing this parachute is I'm going to take a piece of uh, brassy sized copper wire here and I'm going to take this wing and I'm going to make a couple turns around it. Not, not super tight, just enough to hold that wing down out of the way. Now I'll take my pink yarn. I'm going to lay it up in here right at the base, catch it with a couple turns, and then exit in place, just like you would on a normal parachute. Then I'll lift the two pieces together, and I'm going to hold the post um, here in my thread hand, and I'm going to wrap the thread with my material hand, and I'm just going to get this post started, just a couple turns there, and then I'll take a wrap around the hook. Now I've had this Cree feather sitting on my desk for a while, and it just happens to be a size 16, so I'm going to use it. Um, obviously brown and grizzly would work just fine, just plain brown by itself is good too. Um, if you've got a Cree feather sitting on your desk that you've been dying to use, this is a good spot to do it. So I'm going to tie this feather in here at the front, just behind the eye, to the hook shank. And then I'm going to prop that feather up next to the wing. And with the thread in my material hand, I'm going to post up the base of the wing here and back down again. You can see the trick on that is to keep the bobbin inverted as you make those wraps. Now I'm going to take a little pinch of brown superfine dubbing and I'm going to put this on my thread as thin as I can get it. Um, we've got most of the bulk that we uh, want or need already in the thorax here, so we don't want to build up um, a lot of a lot of volume here. I'm going to start the stubbing up behind the eye and come up to the base of the wing and come behind the wing, even over the base of the wing just a bit. Sort of work back and forth, just rounding out that thorax. And as I finish, I'll let that leave that last little bit of dubbing on the thread. But I'm going to be going around the base of the wing with my parachute wraps. Now, the reason I leave that dubbing on there, um, this is something I've kind of discovered in the last few days. It's going to make a nice little base for the, uh, um, the hackle to sit in as I wrap it. So I'm going to grab my, grab my hackle in my rotary hackle pliers, and I'm going to start it at the top of the post here and just put one turn under the previous turn, four or five turns down the post. And when I get down there, I'm going to pick up my bobbin on the far side of the hook, turn it upside down, and I'm going to come between the hackle and the dubbing for a couple, three turns. When I get out over the hook, I'm going to drop the thread down, come up and around, so that now I'm going around the hook again. Now I can come in and trim my feather stem out. I'll come in and whip finish. I always try to sneak this up from the underside so I don't trap any hackle. Trim that thread out. Make sure I don't have any weird fibers sticking out there. I'll prop my wing up a bit. I'm going to trim that wing a little on the short side. Typically my parachutes have a, a shank length long post, but on these caddis I like to make it a little bit shorter. And now I can pull my wire out. Just unwind him. And I've got this super cool little parachute caddis. Um, that wire trick, it was funny that I almost forgot it because that's the whole trick, the whole reason I wanted to show you this one um, is that's how you'll do a, a, mat, a PMX or a, a, you know parachute hopper works, works very similarly. Uh, I'm going to put a little drop of head cement here just at the base of the wing, very thin head cement, just let it bleed down into that post. And there's our Bloom Parachute Caddis. Um, obvious advantages on this one is it's a little easier to see. Um, you can tie this with any variety of materials. Like I say, regular ring neck pheasant tail will work fine for the body, turkey quail. Um, yes, of course, you could just dub it, um, you know, light versions, dark versions, uh, whatever color wing post you like. But um, pretty viz, high viz little, little pattern here um, that's really pretty quick and easy to tie. I tied a bunch of these up for the Missouri years ago, um, went up there on a trip, and um, man, they, <clears throat> they work like crazy. So... It's sort of become a staple in my box, and uh, you know it's not one I talk talk about a lot. It uh, um, is a really cool little fly, and uh, 
it's got some cool little tricks to tie in it. So um, twist a few up, see what you think. Um, and that'll give you a chance to use up some of that Cree Hackle you got laying around. Oh, what's up? You don't have Cree Hackle laying around? Well, let's see what we can do about that. Thanks for watching. Take care. Thank <music> you.